We begin reading today and will continue for all weekdays until Advent from the Gospel of Luke. The Gospel of Luke is known by many names. It is known as the Gospel of Prayer because Jesus is shown praying more often in Luke than in any other Gospel. It is also known as the Gospel of the Poor because in the Gospel of Luke, the poor are given pride of place. The beatitude in the Gospel of Luke is pronounced on the poor, not on the poor in spirit, like in the Gospel of Matthew. Also, Luke is the only Gospel which has the parable of the rich fool who wants to build big barns for himself and wants to take it easy and is told that tonight God requires him to come and then whose will all the riches be? Luke also is the only gospel which has the parable of Dives, which means the rich man and Lazarus. As a matter of fact, there is only one parable which Jesus told in which a character is named and it is the one of Dives and Lazarus. The name Lazarus means God helps. And the reason why God helps Lazarus is because Lazarus is poor. The Gospel of Luke is also called the Gospel of Women because Luke gives a lot of importance to women in his Gospel. Often when Luke has an incident concerning a man or a healing miracle in which a man is involved, Luke follows it by speaking about a woman who is also healed. The Annunciation in the Gospel of Luke, unlike in Matthew, where it is made to Joseph, is made to Mary. Mary's Magnificat, Elizabeth's Song of Praise are all only in the Gospel of Luke. Very strikingly, it is only Luke who speaks explicitly that Jesus had women disciples. In Luke chapter 8 verses 1 to 3, we are told clearly that there were women who were his disciples and followed him and who provided for him from out of their means. So Luke's gospel is a very beautiful gospel. It was written after the gospels of Matthew and Mark and so Luke had time to reflect to discern, to think, and then to write about Jesus. In the Gospel text of today, Jesus goes to his hometown. And one would expect that when he went to his hometown, there would be total acceptance. Unfortunately, that is not the case. Jesus goes and stands up in the synagogue and reads from the prophet Isaiah. And in the text that Jesus chose, he makes four points that God has sent him first to proclaim good news to the poor, second, to free those who are oppressed, third, to restore the sight of the blind, and fourth, to pronounce the acceptable year, the jubilee year of the Lord. This is taken in by those listening to him in the synagogue and they are happy and they are excited because someone from their home hometown can speak so eloquently, can speak God's word, can speak a word which builds up and they say to him, remain here. Do all of that only with us. And Jesus says, no, I cannot do it only with you. I have to do it to whoever comes to me. I cannot be exclusive in my ministry. Every single person is welcome. The people who hear him 
cannot accept this. Why do you want to go to other places? Why do you want to go to other people? Can't you do it here? And then Jesus gives the examples of two Old Testament prophets, Elijah, who healed the leper Naaman, who was not a Jew, but a Syrian. And Elisha, who was sent to a widow in Zarephath, which was a Sidonian town, not a Jewish town. This is too difficult for the people to accept because they wanted Jesus exclusively. But Jesus cannot be exclusive. Jesus is not exclusive. He is available to the whole world because his message is a message of love. His message is a message of goodwill. His message is the good news which says that God loves without distinction and that God wants everyone to be happy. So often we become so narrow-minded, so parochial in our image of God. We pigeonhole God. We make God as small as we are and we restrict the working of God. The gospel text of today is inviting us to make our God big, to make our God a God who includes everyone, but primarily the poor, primarily the brokenhearted, primarily the oppressed, primarily the blind, and to proclaim to these the acceptable year of the Lord. How will you? as a disciple, not merely of Jesus, but of God, proclaim this jubilee to everyone you meet.